What's up guys, Ricky C here and welcome to race number 6 of my career mode. Um, we're currently sitting in ninth with 18 points, 9 points ahead of our teammates, so that's a good sign. Meeting the objective of, that Salber have set us, so that's good even if ninth isn't really where we want to be. We kind of we want to be probably top 6 or top 7, maybe the Williams, Ferraris and Mercs are a little bit too fast. As you can see they've kind of broken away from the field. And in practice, Vettel was set the best time. It was very, very wet as well. So the Inters are out and it was slippery as hell. It's really difficult to get a time in the wet in Monaco. Here we are at one of the most difficult circuits on the racing calendar. Welcome to Monaco for today's Formula One qualifying. Monaco is a difficult circuit to drive on at the best of times, but with the poor weather conditions we could be in for, a fascinating few minutes lie ahead as the drivers try to put in a good lap time while ensuring that they don't hit the barriers. Well, that's the challenge of a street circuit like Monaco. You're constantly so close to the barriers that one small mistake could easily result in damaging the car, which could spell disaster for your qualifying session. Right, so 20 minute qualify, uh, qualifying session as per usual as we look up into Raskas, that's not great. Um, coming onto the main straight now, past the pit exit. Obviously there's going to be no DRS because it's way too wet in these conditions, it'll be dangerous. Across the line now, we're going to get into 7th gear before we hit saint -Devot. We get a, uh, We lock up a little bit and then don't hit the apex and get a pretty bad run up over Raj. It is wet so you've got to take in consideration for that. As we go into Massenet now, you want to stay as far right as you can and then swing left. We don't do that perfectly, obviously it's wet, but we, we're kind of wide and miss the apex as we, as we slide through Casino. Down into Mirabeau now. We, you want to stay on the right-hand side of that kind of cycling lane, but we don't do that. Still a decent lap so far as we go through the slowest corner. Second gear, you want to stay in second gear through these two corners and just kind of feather th the, throttle and bakes, uh, the throttle and brakes through Portia. Under the through the tunnel now, under the tunnel, both work. As we come out of the tunnel into the rain, down into the new voucher cane. You want to miss the wall on the right, on the left rather, because you know you'd break your car if you didn't. Pretty good run through there. We keep it clean as well into the back. We're not really using the whole track here. We're, this is a quite conservative lap, I feel. And look, we're two tenths. Actually, I think we're two tenths up. Was that two tenths up or depth? I don't know. It's minus, which should be two tenths up. Um, as we go through Raskas now onto Anthony Noge. In second gear, again, feathering the throttle like you do through uh, Portia. And across the line in a 1.22.9. So what was that? Like, 20, like, that was about a two second game, wasn't it? Something crazy like that. And here we're pushing way too hard. And through, just before the swimming sh pool chicane, we bin it in the wall. As Hamilton goes past. Oops. Well, they've shown the car has great pace today. Damn right, I've second in a fucking Sauber. Look, look at Nazir, the detriment. Monaco, the race that every driver wants to win. And today is that chance for one of the current crop of Formula One drivers. I'm sure many of them were dreaming of standing on the podium, receiving the winner's trophy last night. But who will make it a reality today? We knew this was a track that suited the Mercedes well, but no one would have expected that Lewis Hamilton would have created such a gap to his rivals in qualifying. If he stays out of trouble and the car continues to perform, well, victory should surely be a formality. You can never be sure if qualifying pace will turn into race performance. It often depends on how focused the car setup was for a single lap on new tyres. But even if he's slightly slow in the nose around him, he'll be trying to make his car as wide as possible on track to defend his position. Just what do you think will be going through Fernando Alonso's head as he watches now how well Ferrari are doing this year? Fernando left Ferrari as he didn't believe they'd be able to offer him the opportunity to win that third world title. If he knew this form was around the corner, I dare say he would have stayed put. Right, so, sitting on the grid, the bad side of the grid, waiting for the lights to go out. And away we go, we've got a really, really bad start. We've bogged down in first gear. We're up to third gear up by now though, and Vettel's mugged us up the inside. Raikkonen's having a look as well, but we're gonna do a wall of death around the outside of Vettel as we go up over Vaj. So that's absolutely brilliant. Now we're side by side, up, all the way up the hill. Into Massonet, still side by side. He's obviously, he's got the option tires, we've only got the primes, I forgot to mention that. We've done a cutback through Casino. As Vettel gets a little bit wide into Mirabeau now. We've actually hit him, we've had to go down to first steer so we didn't understeer into him. And we're now going to do it around the outside of the head. Oh my goodness. 
Oh my goodness. Poetry. Poetry in motion, may I add. As we go through Portier, we've re reclaimed second with a pretty fantastic move around the outside of the hairpin. Not really much contact, a little bit, but you've got to expect it as we look back onto Vettel's view now. As he's just doing, he's doing it all to death around the outside of Massene. He hits the curb on the right-hand side and gets a little bit wide, so that gives us a sniff up the inside. We go into, we kind of understeer into him. Doesn't really affect him that much. And then he's, I don't know, I, I, how can you go side by side through there without making like major contact? And we've made it work. And actually, you can see in the top right, Rosberg was doing the exact same, but with Raikkonen. But because of the like, oh wow, that's the. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, it's probably ideal that you do not start from lower than fifth at Monaco, because Maldonado finds a way to go airborne up by Ravage. <laughs> anyway, lap two. So Hamilton's just done a 17.6, and we've actually also done a 17.6. So we have some pace here. We're on the worst tire as well as we whack the wall out on the um, exit of Sandovot, which. It's pretty bad driving. You don't want to do that on lap two. But now we've actually set the fastest lap time on lap seven, a 17.3. That's probably two or three tenths faster than Hamilton. He's only 3.7 seconds up the road. So we're on the prime tire here. Hamilton's running on the option tire. So if we can stay within maybe seven, eight seconds by the time of the pit stops, we're going to be in a really, really good position to win this race because the option tire is probably about one or one and a half seconds a lap faster. And we're about to head, out, head on to lap 11. I'll get there eventually. Vettel's actually four tenths behind. Hamilton four seconds up the road. And we've gone wide in Massene. We've lost the front, left, N nose, N plate. Not N nose. We've got no grip now. We're going to go into Massene. We're hitting the wall. We have no idea what we're doing. We're locking up tyres. We've lost all downforce. So, you know, we fucked it, basically, is what I'm trying to say. It felt like my wing had actually broken at this point. Kind of insight into what I was, to what Ericsson was feeling rather, not me, Ricky C. It's Ericsson. The yeah, when you lose your like any part of the wing on this game, it feels like you've lost the whole thing. I don't know if that's some kind of coding bug or I'm just maybe that's how it should feel. I don't know. It does feel absolutely awful though. So we come out of the pits in lap 12. It, I, I did want to do a two stop because I know the Sabers do not hang on to their tyres at all well. So we come out of the pits right behind Button as we go up Beauregard. Lap 7, not lap 7, we're in P7. Lap 12. As we dive now into a corner that we cut and the Nouvelle Chicane. Oops. Anyway, we, we, ca we carry the speed around the outside of Tabak and we made it! Oh my goodness! How do you do that? I'm a god. I'm not a god, I'm sorry. But anyway, as you can see, we do a little bit of a cut through the Nouvelle Chicane. I should have blacked that out, shouldn't I? And then we go around the outside of the McLaren and Jensen button into Tabak! He just misses the wall and then goes sideways through the uh, apex. Which was pretty great from him, to be fair. Surprised I didn't get a penalty for the corner cut in. Anyway, lap 14. 15.9 now. So that's, what, a set over a second faster than our previous best time? So we've, we've got some speed on these option tyres. As I said, yeah, over a second. The option to prime difference. So we're going to catch uh, Hamilton in no time. Despite having to get a new front wing. And we've had a bit of a, bit of a good little, little, little clumsy... Clumsy words and a clumsy overtake on Monaco, on Monaco, on Massa, in Portier. We're actually coming up behind Nazir, who's in a massive train of cars, and Bottas is actually in the middle of that. So, but Bottas is third, so that's a podium right in front of us. Nazir and Sainz, I don't, I, I'm not sure what they're doing. Uh, who knows? Who the fuck knows? Lap 18, around the outside of Bottas, probably the easiest move I'll make all season. And into P3. Vettel's actually, Vettel and Rosberg have actually jumped into the pit stop. No, it's Hamilton, sorry. Rosberg's in no man's land at the moment. He'll come back into play later, I'm sure. But we can actually see that we've jumped Vettel in the pit stops. He's 2.3 seconds behind us now. We're right onto the back of Hamilton, filling his mirrors. So lap 20, we got the option tyre on. It's not going to last the end of the race though, so whatever we're going to do on Hamilton, we need to do it soon because the tyres will fall off. I think we pitted on lap 12, so we've been on an 8 lap stint at the moment. You can probably do 15 laps tops on the option tyre before you start to lose a lot of time. 
So we're saying we're probably going to say lap 25, lap 25, lap 26. You want to get into the jump into the pit stop. So if we can get past Hamilton now and use the speed that we have on these options, then this race is going to be ours to win, ours to get a podium at least. Anyway, we've, we've got a really, really good run through uh, the swimming pool chicane around the outside of Raskas, side by side. We love going side by side in Monaco, apparently. Now into no nose. I think the move is pretty much done. If we can just get the traction out, we haven't. We broke traction because we hit the wall and we've got DRS though. But Hamilton's got away. So, probably our best chance there. And we've squandered it. And as much as I'd like to say I could get a better run up uh, by Ravage than Hamilton there, he's, his traction is unbelievable. Despite looking like we had him there. So, heading into turn one on lap 25, we're going a little bit wide and we've lost any kind of distance to Hamilton. We've lost probably about a second there. And the DRS, the slipstream, not that it helped that much on Mon at Monaco. But. That's not what we needed to do. We've headed on to lap 27. We finally got up to the back of Hamilton. It took me a really long time. I had to drive as, like, as hard as I possibly could and concentrate so much. Because the tyres were starting to go off at this point. I really need to get some, a new set. But getting a new set now, I would be 15, 16, 17 seconds behind. And that gap, I probably wouldn't be able to like catch up. I mean, maybe I could. But we might fall behind Vettel and that's not what we need. And we hit the wall again. So it's, it's kind of going downhill, the tyres have gone and I really need to get a new set. And Sainz has had a massive, massive, oh fuck you. You fu fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, I can't say anything else except for fuck. Lap, oh come on now. Again, we're in such a good position, the podium is on. And some retard has decided that he would whack the wall on the right hand side, puncture his left eye on the left hand side of the wall and then sit in the middle of the track of Massonet and move into the like, racing line. I don't know how I haven't DNF'd there because he's DNF'd. None then I had to just put it into reverse. I couldn't get away from the wall. Vettel turned up on the scene of the accident. I'm just wheel spinning away. Apparently I'm charging curves. That's what the red lightning means. Maybe No, it's raining actually. So maybe that's why that could help us. Rain. So are we going to actually decide that intermediate tyres, he's actually just said that the inters aren't going to be good, but no, we've gone for it. We might as well go for it, to be fair. We've got quite a big distance to mass, or I think. He might get past us, but when something like that happens and the rain starts, you might as well gamble, because I think we might... Wow. That's, that's a big shame, because we had such a good opportunity to get a win there. And it seems like it's gone through, got thrown out the window. Now we're in P4. Massa's a good three or four seconds behind us. He's actually coming up by Ravage now. We're in the middle of Massa, eh? We've hit the wall, yeah. The inters just don't work now. It's not it's not wet enough. We won't, we, won't get them to, we won't get them into the working temperature, is what I wanted to say. And now Massa's all over us on the a beautiful set of soft tyres. Ah, this is probably the lap. Right now is the lap where you want to switch. Because Maslach gets past us, and I believe as we go up the hill, this is where we start to feel the traction and the, the benefit of the Inter. And here you can see Massa getting brave with the slick tyres on a wet track. On a, well, a moist track. But anyway, a lap ahead now. I think a lap. We've got a lap in the distance as Sainz has his wing over the track. The stewards haven't cleaned it up yet. The stewards? Yeah, no, that's what, no, it's not the stewards. The race marshals. That is what they are. But we're past him now. Lap 35, it's looking wet as fuck. It's really, really slippery now on the inters. And we're in P3, so we've jumped... No, Hamilton. Hamilton got knocked out of the race. That is what I needed to say. Hamilton is now out. Lap 35, back in the podium position. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So the front left is punctured. We haven't lost the wing, so this is going to be a quick stop. We were going to pit anyway for the wet tyres, but we got a three-second penalty. Not what we needed, but the race isn't over yet, because that is the lap we needed to stop for uh, wet tyres. Rosberg hasn't, Vettel hasn't, so we're going to gain a, a lot of time. And Raikkonen has kept out of the way, so that's good. So we had a Raikkonen, now we've got a clear track ahead of us. Wet tyres are what you want now. And to be fair, this was the first time I'd ever driven on a wet track in a race. Apart from Spain, but that was right at the end. Pretty sure it was Spain, yeah. Uh, and that was the only Inter, so that was pretty simple. But on an actual wet track, this is the first time I've used the wet tyres on this game. 
So judging when to pit and when not to pit was kind of difficult. But we've actually jumped Rustberg, so that's great. Vettel was used about five seconds ahead, I think. No, probably less than that, about three seconds ahead. So we get really, really, really squirrely on the exit of Saint Devot. Lap 37 now. Vettel's just ahead. We've braked really, really late. He's not comfortable on the brakes. We've hit his... Oh, no. Oh, no. That's a bit silly. So, it gets to the end of the race. We're in a good position, and we just choke all over the place. <sighs> On lap 38 now, going into Massenet. We've got a little bit wide, and surprise, surprise, it gets to the end of the race, and I, the, I think the wheels just fall off the wagon, and the bullshit comes flying through the door, and I just don't know what to do. I mean, this is our best track. I'm really good at Monaco. I've always been pretty decent at Monaco. And last 10 laps, we break two or three wings. We punch at two tyres. We do... Uh, we See, when I pitted for the tyres was probably about the right time. The Inters may be a lap or two early. But uh, it's just such an awful opportunity missed. His button's being really slow. I don't know why he probably doesn't have good tyres on you, it's probably got into still. And we're actually right behind up up behind Massa now. It doesn't matter, we got a three second penalty, so whatever whatever happens now is irrelevant. So at this point I'm like, okay, let's just spin spin around in circles. This isn't me being a detriment, this is just me trying to break my wing. Being annoyed basically. Venting my frustration. impressive win here today a cracking drive by the Mercedes man it was a fantastic performance and one that they should be very proud of every part of the team pulled together to achieve today's result there'll be plenty more twists and turns to come this season I hope you can join us at the next race to see just who will come out on top oh I don't want to look at it man I don't want to look at it at all dude come on now 15.982 so what 1.5 seconds ahead of any other driver in the fastest lap department. Granted, we did have options on, but that is still quite a big difference. Anyway, Rosberg wins his first race of the season, maybe, I'm not sure. Massa gets a podium, Vettel gets third, so decent for them. Passamon Aldonado gets himself a point. Jensen Button finishes seventh, so that's great for him. But he always was good on intermediate and wet conditions, so maybe they've coded it so that he's really good in like, wet and changing conditions. Wouldn't be surprised. Anyway, I think we're about... Where are we going to be in the championship? Eighth. 30 points. So that's not so bad. We're 93 points from Rosberg. To be honest, the Williams, Ferraris and Mercedes are not going to be caught. So seventh in the championship has got to be the goal. So if we can beat Daniel Ricciardo, it's probably going to be a, a bit of a brawl between us to the end of the season. And probably fifth or fourth in the championship. Yeah, fourth in the championship. So they're the goals. Um, that'll pretty much be it. So, thank you guys for watching. If you got to the end, that's great if you did. Um, let me know what you thought of how bad I am at driving. Please do. Um, trust me, I am I am genuinely, genuinely quite good most of the time. Um, you know, you don't finish top five in AOR F1 for nothing. You know what I'm saying? But today, and in career mode so far, I have been the biggest fuck to Salwa that you have ever seen in your life. We will, ch we will, we will get better. Okay, I'm gonna start sweating this, and we are gonna get some decent podiums because I can't have myself looking this bad. Anyway, as I said before, thank you for watching. I do appreciate um, any time you do watch the videos because I'm kind of new to this and starting out. So yeah, I guess that'll be it for me. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>